Well, hello. Come right in. Oh, George, we've got company. Well, now it's morning at the Burns home, and we find Gracie in the kitchen getting breakfast while her little duck, Herman, looks on hungrily. Oh, no, no, Herman. I know the bacon smells good, but you can't have any. Oh, we can't get good. Blah, 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 blah. No, no, I'm sorry, darling. The bacon is rationed, and ducks don't get ration books. <laughs> oh, Herman! <gasps> That's not a nice thing to call the OPA. <laughs> now, now, don't get under my feet. I want to empty this hot grease in that tin can so I can take it down to the butcher. <laughs> what for? Well, because the government needs it to make bombs and bullets. Just think. This bacon grease might make the bullet that gets Hitler. Right? Yes, really. Oh. <laughs> I hope so, too. And if everyone saves every bit of waste kitchen fat and turns it over to their butcher, we'll have enough ammunition to make the Axis surrender. <laughs> oh, Lord, Herman, please, not so loud. We mustn't disturb Daddy George. I want him to be in the best of humor when he comes down to breakfast. You see, next Sunday is Easter, and Mama needs a new outfit. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So when George comes down, we must be real nice to him. First, we'll greet him with a big hug and kiss. Uh-huh. <laughs> Herman, now you stop that. George happens to be very kissable. I'm sure he, he's even more kissable than Charles Boyer. <laughs> Hey, you, you stop laughing. <laughs> I mean it. <laughs> really, he is. <laughs> now, stop. <laughs> Here comes your daddy. Now, I'll flatter him into buying me a new Easter outfit. You know what I always say? I can catch more vinegar with flies than you can, sugar. Now, Herman, you run along. Run along. In my Easter bonnet. Uh, with the breakfast ready? Oh, yes, sweetheart, darling. All ready for my precious husband. Gee, how come all the endearing terms this morning? Well, because I love you, and you're so handsome. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> Sit down and let's eat. Oh, no, dear. You eat and I'll wait on you. After all, you're the master and I'm your slave. Uh, Gracie. Yes, boss? <laughs> Look, uh... Let's just eat breakfast. Oh, all right. Uh, do, you, do you notice something special about the toast this morning? What? I didn't burn it. How come? I didn't toast it. Well, congratulations. Well, I want this to be a jolly breakfast. Would you like me to tell you a joke? No, I don't. Now, stop me if you've heard it. Two men met on a street corner, and one of the men was carrying a watermelon. Have you heard it? No. Oh. Well, that's too bad, because I've forgotten the rest of it. Yeah, well, now let's... In let's, uh... my Easter bonnet, with all the frills upon it, I'll be the grandest lady in the Easter parade. You know what that was I just sang? Easter parade. Say, that reminds me. Easter will soon be here. It will? Oh, my goodness, I hadn't even given it a thought. Really? Yes, and after what happened to Mrs. Pomtag, too. What happened to her? Well, yesterday morning, Mrs. Pomtag picked up her breakfast plate, and guess what she found under it? What? $50 her husband had put there for her Easter outfit. Well, that's nice, Well, but... I'm off to the kitchen, dear. <laughs> that's right over there. Gracie, come back here. Look. Was all this build up to get money for an Easter outfit? Why, George, whatever gave you that idea? Now, look, sweetheart, you don't have to go to all this trouble. Why don't you just come right out and ask me? It would be a lot simpler. Oh, all right. George, can I have a new Easter outfit? No. <laughs> no? No, you have plenty of clothes, and we've got to cut down our spending. But, George... Forget it, darling. No new e Easter outfit this year. I'm going into the den to finish my breakfast. Well, I like that. And believe me, George Burns, the next time you ask me to marry you, I'll listen to my mother. Uh, come in. Hi, Gracie. Hello, Bill. Well, gee, why all the gloom? Who are you mad at? Men. Oh, for a minute I thought it might concern George. <laughs> well, what do you got against men? They're beasts. 
Mean, hateful, contemptible beasts. That's what men are. Yeah, I agree with you. That's why I go out with women. <laughs> now, George is the biggest beast of them all. He won't give me the money for a new Easter outfit. Bill, well, why don't you go in and see if you can get George to give me the $50? Well, Gracie, I make it a rule never to interfere between husband and wife. You know? oh. oh, all right, Bill. You don't want to help me. I won't hold it against you. I'll still use swan soap, because I think it's the best soap made, and it gives so much suds. Oh, gee, yes, Gracie. Swan is actually four soaps in one. The soap for your hands and face, the soap for bathing the baby, for your dishes, and for your light laundry. Four swell soaps in one. Yeah, I know. Just too bad that some people can't be as nice as the soap they sell, that's all. Well, Gracie, I'd like to help oh, you, no, but... no, no, I don't want you to help me. There's no hard feelings. I'll still use Swan to wash out my nice things and for washing the dishes. Because Swan is so mild, it helps keep my hands soft and lovely. And it gives so much suds. Gee, Gracie, what you just said was beautiful. Maybe I can go in and talk to George. Oh, no, no, Bill. It's all right. Gracie, you've got to let me talk to George. He doesn't appreciate a wife who knows that Swan is her best wartime buy because it's four swell soaps in one. A toilet soap, a baby soap, and a soap for dishes and light laundry. Where is he? Oh, no, Bill. I wouldn't have you talk to George for anything in the world. You'll find him in the library. Oh, hello, Bill. Well, shame on you for not letting Gracie have an Easter outfit when it gives so much suds. <laughs> huh? You heard me. Why don't you give her the money? Now, wait a minute. Hold your horses. I've been thinking it over, and I wanted to have the outfit. But I already put my foot down, and if I give it now, I'll only lose face. Some loss. <laughs> Very funny. Wait a minute. I've got an idea how Gracie can get the 50, and I still won't have to back down. Yeah, how? You write her a letter. Me? Uh, yeah, so she won't recognize the handwriting, and you enclose this $50 bill and sign it her Uncle Hubert. Well, has she got an Uncle Hubert? No, but she won't remember. Her family is so big, her mother only knew most of the kids to not do. <laughs> oh, well, okay, George. I'll write the letter. And I'm glad you're letting Gracie have the money. A fellow with your talent should be generous. Well, thanks. After all, you have one of the greatest talents in radio. I have? Yeah, and she deserves an Easter outfit. <laughs> hey, look, Bill, here comes the postman. Are you sure you mailed that letter to Gracie? Yeah, and I put the 50 bucks in it. Now, don't worry. Well, uh, tell me, what did you say in the letter? Oh, you'll find out. But I still don't know why you didn't just hand Gracie the money, George, instead of having me write a letter from a phony Uncle Hubert. Bill, I had my reasons. Someday, you might marry a girl like Gracie. So just take it easy. Well, if I marry a girl like Gracie, I can afford to take it easy. <laughs> You're a very hilarious fellow, Bill. Oh, Gracie! Oh, yes, dear. Uh, did you change your mind about the money? No, I just want you to answer the door. Oh, Oh, all right. I'll be your servant. I'll do all the work and get no money. Oh. Good afternoon, Mrs. Burns. Um, hello, Mr. Postman. Oh, I'm so thrilled and excited I can hardly talk. Guess what? What? I got a new muscle. No. Yes, ma'am. I found it on my arm this morning, poking his little head out from between two of my old ones. Well, that's nice. You know, I've got so many muscles that I feel guilty every time I get a new one. Seems like I'm the only man in the world who has a C card for muscles. Yes, I guess so. Mrs. Burns, you don't seem to be your usual cheerful self today. Something wrong? Well, yes, Mr. Postman. I need some money and my husband won't give it to me. Oh, we men are such stinkers. <laughs> Well, here's a letter for you, Mrs. Burns. Oh, thanks. Goodbye, Mr. Postman. Goodbye, Mrs. Burns. And remember, keep smiling. <laughs> well, I wonder what this is. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, George, Bill, look. What? What is it? A letter with $50 in it. Well, well, now who in the world could, could that be from? Oh, what a ham. Oh, 
Gracie, what does it say? Well, it says, um, Dear Gracie, I'll bet your surprise to hear from your old Uncle Hubert. Well, imagine that, Uncle Hubert. Well, read on. Um, I, I heard that you got married to a man named Burns some time ago. Your mother tells me that he isn't the brightest man in the world, but she does admit that he's one of the ugliest. <laughs> Bill, this Uncle Hubert is not a nice fellow. Oh, I don't know. I kind of like him. <laughs> Go ahead, Gracie. Um, your mother also told me that your husband's fingers are completely covered with eagle feathers from squeezing every quarter he gets his hands on. <laughs> Bill, this Uncle Hubert is going to get a punch in the nose. Well, why tell me, George? Tell Uncle Hubert. Well, what else does he say, Gracie? Uh, uh, therefore, my dear niece, I'm enclosing this $50, which you may spend in any way you see fit. Signed, your loving Uncle Hubert. Well, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Now, Bill, I'd like to speak to you. Oh, uh, later, George. Goodbye. Bill! Well, how do you like that, George Burns? You can be a mean old miser. My Uncle Hubert will take care of me. He's always been my favorite uncle. <laughs> Oh, so you know Uncle Hubert? Oh, certainly. He's married to my aunt. Uh, they live in a big house, and uh, every summer he spends his vacation, at, and his name is Hubert. <laughs> you must be quite a character. Oh, yes, and he's worth oodles of money. Why, he could buy and sell you. Well, maybe he couldn't sell you, but he could try. Oh, fine. My Uncle Hubert's a millionaire. That's what he is. Probably a billionaire. He's got hundreds of dollars. Look, Gracie. Well, George, if you'll excuse me, I'll get dressed and go shopping. See, now I'll get a fur coat, maybe two fur coats and wait a minute, wait three a minute. or four. Wait a minute. You're going to get that with $50? Oh, this 50 is just the start. Uncle Hubert will undoubtedly send me $50 every week. But, Gracie, maybe Uncle Hubert doesn't intend to send you any more money. George, who knows Uncle Hubert better? You or me? Me. I mean, you. Uh, 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 look, Gracie, don't spend more than $50, please. Oh, relax, dear. My goodness, the person would think it was your money. Oh. <laughs> well, that phony Uncle Hubert that George dreamed up really backfired on him. However, he knows a certain broken-down actor who hangs around the corner pool room. So, we find him at the pool room now, trying to make a deal with the fellow. Now, look, my good friend, I have a proposition for you. You were an actor, weren't you? We're an actor. My good man, I am an actor. I merely happen to be between engagements at the moment. When was your last engagement? Not quite 14 years ago. Well, here's my proposition. I am not interested. Be gone, Oaf. Time flies by on wings of light, and I would the little snooker play. <laughs> well, I thought that what you... What care I for the thoughts of fools? Uh, well, okay. I thought you might like to make a little money. Money? Uh, sit down, my charming friend. Sit down. <laughs> sit down. Hang up the cue, Joe. Mm. Now, here's what I want you to do. Go to my wife and pretend that you're her Uncle Hubert. Oh, you haven't anything in the juvenile lead, huh? <laughs> no, not at the moment. Just tell her that you're Uncle Hubert and you've lost all your money. Oh, I see. I'm supposed to be destitute. Hmm. There's an excellent character part. I shall pretend that I'm a bum. Yes. <laughs> uh, try to make it believable. Now, uh, have you got it straight? Oh, naturally. I enter left, a brave, pitiful figure in tatters, but chin up. I take her hands in mine. My dear, I say, I am your Uncle Hubert, and I've lost all my money. Fine, fine. And what will she say? Oh, she'll probably say, oh, really? She hasn't much of a part, has she? <laughs> Look, she isn't acting, you are. Oh, you may depend upon me, son. Now then, shall we discuss the... Uh, financial terms of this little deal. Naturally, you realize my services do not come cheaply. Naturally. I'll, uh, I'll give you two bucks. Two dollars? Do you think that I would give my great histrionic talents for such a miserable pittance? Do you think that I, who trod the boards with Sir Henry Irving, would lower myself to such depth for a paltry two dollars? Okay, two and a half. It's a deal. <laughs> well, fine. Here's the address. Now get going. The house is right down oh, the street. There you are, George. Well, who's your friend? 
I, sir, am a famous Shakespearean actor. Oh, oh, why, sure, you're Mr., uh, Mr., uh... Oh, gee, I'll never forget the night you opened in Hamlet. What a thrill. Oh, thank you, thank you. Get going, Polly, get going. <laughs> Why, you know, that theater was so jammed, I had to stand in line for two hours. But it was worth it, wasn't it? Oh, 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 oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> worth it? Oh, well, I'll say it was. When I finally got into that washroom, there was Swan, the new white floating soul. <laughs> Bill, let the man go. Gracie, I'll spend the Just money. Just a moment, Mr. Burns, my dear character. Do you mean to infer that the brand of soap in the washroom is a greater attraction than I? Well, uh, how many roles did you play? Three. I was a messenger, a spear carrier, and an offstage mumble. Oh, well, there you are. Swan Soap plays four roles. It's four soaps in one. It's the soap for dishes, for light laundry, for bathing the baby, and it's the soap for your hands and face. You see, four great soaps in one. Bill, for heaven's sake, let the man well, go. Oh, comparing me to a soap. Why, well, I was sensational. I received a tremendous hand. Well, tremendous hands are important, but let's not forget that little hands deserve attention, too. <laughs> what is more precious than a little baby? Oh... Yes, sir. That's why you should bathe that baby with Swan. Swan's extra mildness is just what the doctor ordered. And say that same extra mildness makes Swan great for anybody's complexion, anybody's tub or shower. Remember, Swan is purer than finest Castile. Well, uh, look, 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 look Shakespeare, huh? do you want to earn the $250 or don't you? Oh, I do, I do. Well, I do, then I do. get going. Do your stuff. Never fear. I'll give a performance that will break her heart in two. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Swan breaks in two, oh. too. <laughs> So you can use one half for dishes and laundry out, and... Out, and out, out, both of you, out! Um, come in. Greetings, me child. Oh, hello. Who are you? What? Don't you recognize me? No, I never saw you before. I am your Uncle Hubert. Why, Uncle Hubert, of course I know you anywhere. <laughs> I am here on a sad mission, my child. Since I wrote to you, my dear niece, I've been buffeted most cruelly by the gods of calamity and mischance. It grieves me to reveal that I am now utterly bereft of pecuniary maintenance. No. Yes. Dreadful, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> terrible. What does it mean? <laughs> I am broke. Oh, my goodness. Imagine going through all that just to lose money. Mm. Naturally, I will be unable to send you any more. Oh, naturally. Well, you shouldn't even have sent me this $50. Oh, is that the 50 I sent you? <laughs> <laughs> Gee, that's just a little too much. Why, yes. Oh, beautiful, isn't it? Beautiful. So green, so crisp, so folding. <laughs> And I, I so destitute. Well, here, Uncle Hubert, you take it back. Oh, no, no, I couldn't think oh, of it. Oh, please take it. Oh, no, really, I shouldn't. Well, if you don't think you should... Give it to oh! me. Oh! <laughs> well, I must be on my way now. Oh, no, oh, well. wait a minute, wait a minute, Uncle Hubert. You know I'm an expert on our family history, but I just can't seem to place you... Oh, it really doesn't matter. Oh, no, 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 wait. I'm sure I can trace you down. But really, my oh, dear... Oh, no, 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 don't tell me. I'd rather figure this out for myself. Now, let's see. The first Allen came to America in 1683. His name was Jonathan, and he married Charity Barebones, the well digger. You're starting in 1683? Yes, yes. I want to be accurate. Hmm. Now, Jonathan and Charity found that they had absolutely nothing in common... So after five years, they separated, and she kept the five children. Now, look, my dear. Uh, see, there were two sons, James and Jeremiah, two daughters, Faith and Hope, and one moron, Makepeace. <laughs> Do you realize that this may take hours, even days? Oh, and... oh, I don't mind. Now, first, we'll take James. At the age of 15, he was thrown out of Massachusetts for stealing a windmill and went to New York where he married Katrinka Van Winkle, a Dutch girl who made cheese out of buffalo milk. Now, please, I said... Oh, no, wait. Isn't that your husband coming up the walk? Where? Oh, oh yes. Hey, Gad, I'm undone. You are. I hope it's only your shoelaces. I'll just slip out the back way. Goodbye. Well, poor Uncle Hubert. I guess he was ashamed to let George see him in his shabby clothes. Hello, dear. Uh... 
Anybody been here while I was gone? Yes, my Uncle Hubert, and guess what? He's lost all his money. Well, 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 isn't that a shame? Yes. So naturally, I gave him back his $50. What? <laughs> you, you, you gave him the $50? Well, it was his money, wasn't it? Oh, well, yes, but what about your Easter outfit? Well, I'll do without a new outfit, George. I'll just wear the one I bought yesterday. Oh. <laughs> Well, George and Gracie will be right back. Meanwhile, I'd like to explain something. Because Swan is four soaps in one, well, when you buy Swan, you don't have to buy easily wasted package soaps for your dishes or a special soap for your light laundry. Nor do you have to buy high-priced toilet soaps for your bath or shower, your hands and face. Swan does all those jobs. And don't forget, Swan is purer than finest Castiles. So you see, Swan is your best wartime buy because you get four great soaps in one. And now here they are, George and Gracie. Mm, let me see now. In 1817, my great, great, great Aunt Mabel Dara on my mother's side married Hubble Robinson, a bustle salesman, and then... But Gracie, there's no use trying to trace that fellow. He was nothing but a pool... A pool room bum? Yes. Oh, well, no wonder I couldn't locate him. I was tracing my mother's side of the family. I should have been tracing my father's. Now, in 1863, Jonathan Allen... 